When you hear the name Nebuchadnezzar, what comes to your mind? As a Christian or Jew that have some knowledge of the Bible or the Torah, you will immediately associate the name with wickedness. He was one of the kings that invaded Israel in those days and took many Israelites into captivity in Babylon. You will remember his dealings with Daniel and even his dreams, which was actually a prophecy for the whole world. You may even remember him eating grasses as a punishment by God and many other unsavory things that he did. I don't think you will even have anything good to say about him. Well in this video, I want to tell the other story of the real Nebuchadnezzar that is not even in the Bible. Yes, Nebuchadnezzar I, also spelled Nebuchadnezzar I, was the fourth king of the second dynasty of Isin and the fourth dynasty of Babylon, and he ruled between 1121 and 1100 BC. In accordance to the Babylonian king Lissi, he ruled for 22 years and was the most notable king of this dynasty. The recovery of the Marduk cultic idol and his victory over Elam are what make him most famous. Interestingly, he is not related to his namesake from later history, Nabuchodonosor II, who is also known as Nebuchadnezzar in Hebrew, the one you probably know in your Bible. Therefore, since the earlier king does not appear in the Bible, it is anachronistic but not improper to apply this designation to him. He is mistakenly referred to as Erichtiokamuna's brother in the chronicle regarding the reign of Amu Miyukin, most likely in place of Ninurtikutayur I. This always brings confusion to the two different kings, the one in the Bible and the one in the Babylonian. Come to think of it, the sole descendants of this family that were even recognized to have ruled during their dynasty were only his son in Lilmdinapli, brother Marduk Ndine, and nephew Marduk Pixri. So the second Nebuchadnezzar, mentioned in the Bible was not part of his family in any way. And of course, this original Nebuchadnezzar, inherited the throne by succeeding his father Ninurta Ninuamai. The Enmejaranki legend, which is also known as the Seed of Kingship, is a Sumerian Akkadian work that describes how the god, Marduk, bestowed upon him perfect wisdom, called the Namkuzu, and it also makes reference to his claim that he is an offspring of Enmejaranki, king of Sippar, and that he comes from a distant line of the throne from before the flood. The text, The Seed of Kingship, opens with a lamentation of earlier events as follows. Conditions changed at that time, during the reign of an earlier king. When good disappeared and evil returned, the Lord became enraged. The gods of the land disobeyed his command after he gave it. Their citizens were encouraged to commit crimes. The spirit of justice stepped aside as the guardians of peace fled to the dome of heaven in a fit of rage. Who protects living things, the people fell on their faces, becoming like those who have no god. The Namtu demon and other evil demons invaded the cult centers and possessed the entire country. The land lost population, and its fortunes changed. The evil Elamite's battle and attack were quick because he did not value the treasures of the country. He destroyed the settlements, turned them into ruins, kidnapped the gods, and desecrated the shrines derived from lines 15 to 24 of the Seed of Kingship. Nebuchadnezzar fought successfully wars during term as the king of Babylon, although the length of Nebuchadnezzar's war with Elam for example and the number of campaigns he launched are unknown, it is conceivable that this was a protracted conflict with a variety of strategic factors. An invasion of Elam was stopped, according to a later literary tradition, when his army contracted the plague and he narrowly avoided dying in the stampede to return home. In a Kadura made to honor him, a raid, or Ayu, is used to denote a successful campaign. He overran Elam in a surprise attack launched from Diyar during the hottest part of the summer, called the Muzi when the axes were held in the hand ignited like fire and the road surfaces were blazing like flame. He was joined in this raid by the Kassite chieftain Idimarduk, who dealt the killing blow to their adversaries. The wells lacked water, and there was no access to drinking water. Even the strongest man's legs began to weaken as the strength of the strong horses dwindled. As you can see from his story, he was a king that was occupied with advancement of his kingdom and winning wars, one at a time. He does not have time for the excesses and other frivolities of the king Nebuchadnezzar you have in your Bible. 
Furthermore, the Kudura claims that Nebuchadnezzar defeated the Elamite king Ultiludian Winak on the banks of the river Elia in a conflict so fierce that resulted in the battle's dust obscuring the sky that they find it hard to even see their way out of the battlefield. No earlier or contemporaneous source mentions Nebuchadnezzar taking the city of Susa, but another Kudura claims that during one of his campaigns, he was able to recover the statues of Marduk, which is referred to as Biel and the goddess Iolia which is the Dingar.Uryai. These were very important deities to the Babylonians of that time. The successive campaign rendered the city of Elam powerless and gave the Babylonians a defining experience, which was comparable to the siege of Troy for the ancient Greeks. This well-known victory was commemorated in poetry and hymns of victory throughout the Babylonian dynasty, and the Marduk prophecy made reference to it. One of two hymns that extol Nebuchadnezzar's military prowess is titled, Nabuchadnezzar and Marduk, and it tells the legendary tale of his recovery of the statue of Marduk. The poem goes like this, Beautiful Babylon traverse your heart, turn your face towards your temple as Sajula, that you love, the king sobs over Marduk's absence as the poem opens. For stylistic reasons, Nebuchadnezzar gave the hymn to Marduk, rather than Ashurbanipal, who also achieved victory over the Elamites. There is a poetic pseudo-autobiography written about him, but it doesn't actually use his name. The events leading up to the statue's return from Elam and its joyful installation in Babylon are described in an interlinear Sumerian Akkadian text. An astrological report from the 7th century alludes to assessments made under his rule and their connection to his destruction of Elam. You must understand that the Babylonian kingdom of that time was the world power, which was fully engrossed in different wars of conquering kingdoms and expanding territory. So if you are still watching this video up to this time, then I commend your determination of learning new things and knowing about history. You see, Nebuchadnezzar's entente cordiale with his contemporaries, making friendship for greater good and benefits with the Assyrian king the I, and this unison subsequently resulted in two military campaigns that he launched against the border forts of Zanchi and Edi in defiance of this agreement as described in the synchronistic history. However, the first was stopped when Ororiai's main force arrived, causing Nabuchodonosor to abandon his offensive engines and flee, while the second culminated in a battle during which the Assyrians slaughtered most of his men and carried off his camp. Even the capture of Karatu, the field marshal of Babylon, is reported in the text. In the Marduk Kadur texts, Nebuchadnezzar is referred to as the invader of the Amorite lands and the despoiler of the Kassites, despite having benefited being a Kassite chieftain and ally and having slain the powerful Loliabu with his weapons. Nebuchadnezzar's building activities are commemorated in inscriptions found on bricks from the Temple of Enlil in Nippur that were used to build the Ekitu Tila, Temple of Adad, in Babylon. He is also mentioned by the later king Simbaripak as having built the Enlil throne for the Ikarijigal in Nippur. His donations of gold vessels to Yuar are also listed in a late Babylonian inventory, and Nabonidus, between 555 and 539 BC, consulted his steel for the NTU priestess. I can tell you for free that Nebuchadnezzar I, the original Nebuchadnezzar, was a man of many acuities in his lifetime. His eighth year is when the earliest of the three remaining economic texts is found. These are the only current commercial or administrative records, along with three Kaduras and a stone memorial tablet. In addition to the two Elamite campaign-related deeds, the other Kaduru attests to a land grant to the Nyaku of Nippur, a particular Nudkutni. For bronze loris daggers bear his name, and two more bear a prayer to Marduk. Although the context is lost, it's possible that he is the Nabuchodonosor who is identified in the Chronicle of Market Prices, which records his ninth year. There is also Agilnamabi, who is identified as the Amanu, the sage who served under him and the subsequent king Adadapladina, when he would write the Babylonian Theodicy in the Uruk list of sages and scholars. Several literary texts, written in both Sumerian and Akkadian, are thought to date from his time. Lambert has proposed that the Enuma Eli may have been written during his rule and that Marduk was promoted to the top of the pantheon, replacing Enlil. 
However, some historians assert that the Enuma Eli originated during the earlier Kassite dynasty. Despite having a colophon stating that it is a copy of an older Babylonian original, a text on chemical processes, and imitations for precious stones is still listed in his library. This Nebuchadnezzar is really different from the one in the Bible. Thank you for your support.